So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to the final video of the year of the Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector, and tonight we're joined by Senorita Sabrosura, and we're doing our annual tradition of our top five albums of the year, my top five and Senorita's top five. So first of all, Senorita, how are you tonight? Good, good. And you, how are you? I'm good. I'm here battling this. I, I, I see that you put the, the Christmas tree. Yes, I put the Christmas tree this year. This year, there's Christmas spirit. <laughs> then I look at your tree, and my tree looks like like super like thin. <laughs> but but you're sitting next to your tree. Yeah, uh, yeah, mine is closer. So, um, yeah, but like, I I want like a big tree. Um, it's it's not real, but. Like I don't have to. Uh, I I bought it like a five years ago, so I don't have to buy it again. That's a good thing. And for people that are watching, yes, I am wearing myself on the shirt. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I'm like, yeah, that's me. So, uh, so yeah, we're here to do our top five albums of the year, and uh, like we always do, we'll start with Senorita Sabrosura. So, Senorita. Uh, tell us about your pick for your number five album of the year. Okay. Well, originally I picked another band, but then when I was like, uh, like making the, the whole list, I was like, wait a minute. This band, I have played it since the album came out, well, since the singles came out, and I'm in love with this band. Uh, it's called The Color of Zion, and the album is Egress. So I've been playing this album a lot. Uh, for me, it's perfect for painting, uh, to listen with headphones. Yeah, and something that people don't know, I actually interviewed this band. Yes, This I band is from Puerto Rico, and I interviewed their, uh, I think it was the guitar player. I, the name yeah, escapes me. Uh, yeah. yeah, the uh, guitar player and lead composer. Yeah, because the Color of Cyan is like an instrumental band, but this is a great release. I agree with you. It's not on yeah. my list, but I do I do like it. I'm not a huge fan of instrumental music, but this is a great instrumental album. Uh, so yes, yes uh, it's, so, it's the, actually, yeah, it's their second album uh, that I came out this year. Uh, on September 1st and when you read the, the description of the album in in their band camp it says it's about time time for knowledge for love for pain and the constant learning that make us who we are so <laughs> uh, they they transmit everything that, uh, I just read in their music uh, they create like this beautiful uh emotive uh layers on top of layers it's like you said very instrumental and i like that they merge like different genres i like you could see the influences of other genres in their band uh it feels like very cinematic post rock post metal uh very orchestral and progressive at times as well yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Progressive too. Uh, it's a it's a great album, and uh, what I like most is the layers on top of the layers. Yeah, it's a it's a complex record, and I actually discovered this band thanks to you because you <laughs> sent me their first album, and I listened to them. And when this came out, I reached out on Instagram to the guitar player. I'm like, hey. I would love to talk about the album, and we did. It's an interview that sadly has like 25 views. It should have more. So people who are watching this, check out the album and check out my interview. It's in English with the color, the color sound, of sound because we go deep into the creation of that album. And I agree, it's it's a great instrumental uh, album. Yeah, it's a, a great album. So I agree uh, with great pick for number five. So. Yeah, so my number five, I actually, this is going to surprise some people that this 
is so high on my list, but this is an uh, it's a super group, a female super group that actually we reviewed together the album. Yeah, but, I recommend that to you. Yeah, but I've been listening to it more and more, and the last like month and a half, it's like the same thing. I had a different number five, but this <laughs> album, I listen to it more. I'm like, I'm like, no, this is too good. So it crept into number five. And I'm talking about the band Boy Genius. And this is the, the album, The Record. And what can I say? This is a great singer, songwriter, like indie rock vibes. I like uh, all of their voices. Uh, the only one that I actually knew was Phoebe Bridges. But then uh, I... Uh, I got to hear some of the music of the other two. I what are they? I escaped their names all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I forgot right now. Yeah, I think it's Lucy Bridges and uh, I don't Lucy know. It's, but it's, yeah, uh, I'll I'll get the names now. But yeah, this record is really good. There's some great uh, songs on it and. The thing that I think is the best thing about this record is the harmonizing. I think how yes. the okay, it's Julian Baker, Phoebe Bridges, Julian. and Lucy uh, Dacus, I think is or Dacus. Yeah, Dacus. Uh, I think when they the the three of them harmonize, it's good. It's so great. And my favorite songs of this album is I love number uh, twenty dollars. I love uh, Not Strong Enough, which I think on the review I said is like the most commercial accessible track. And I also like, uh, I love Emily, I'm Sorry. So this is a song that uh, I've actually been listening to this record a lot with my girlfriend. And there's a line in it when she says, when she called me, I fucking love And we both <laughs> love that part of the of the song and the lyrics. So. I'm very surprised because a lot of people will be like, wow, we're very surprised that this is in your number five because this is usually what I listen to. But it's pretty rocking uh, at some parts. But I, I I, think the harmonizing and the lyrics are the best thing about yeah, this and album. I, and I think a lot of people agree with you because I was watching like the list from for and other websites and they all mention uh, the record with Boy Genius. Yeah, apparently it's an instant classic. Yeah, and I have I have it in my top ten, <laughs> not in my top five, but almost. But yeah, uh, because it's are you greater. surprised that this made my top five? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got out of my comfort zone, and now I, I fucking love the record. Yeah. <laughs> so I listen to the record a lot. So it's at my number five. So moving on, Senorita, your number four. Uh, my number four, it's called Atta from Sigur Ross. Uh, it's their eighth studio album, and it's the first in 10 years. So I, I'm a fan of Sigur Ross, and I was excited uh, to listen to new music and to hear that it, they have a new album. Um, this album, it could be so majestic, so, uh, so full of joy, but at the same time, like a uh, powerful break, uh, uh, heartbreaking, uh, devastating. Uh, but I wasn't disappointed uh, with the music. It's again, layers on top of layers. Uh, you're gonna see most of my picks are layers on top of layers. Uh, it's a you very beautiful, yeah, beautiful, maj majestic album. The more I listen to it, the more I like it. It's uh, an album you can listen to with your headphones to appreciate it better. And I like like they went full with their orchestra and everything. Yeah, I actually haven't listened to this one. Uh, well, you so should. To... It's, it's yeah. really good and the videos are very good. Um, there's a song there, Andra. It, it makes me cry. And then there's another song, uh, Kletur. Uh, they're, they're Icelandic, so that's uh, weird, the titles and the names and everything. But but it, it's really good. Yeah, I like the album cover. Yeah. it's It looks cool. So yeah, <laughs> It's I, an I, example I, of the music. <laughs> yeah, I will it's check it out. Because, 
Yeah, for people who watch our videos, they know like Senorita and me usually have some different tastes. There's things that we love, but we like our top five will never be the same. We'll we'll always have <laughs> different things. So that's why why we do it. Uh, we do these top five together because it's interesting. Because if we like the same shit, it would be boring. So yep. coming up to my number four, and this is a band that I know you know I've been obsessed with this band since 2018 where I first, their first album and their Teenage Risk. And I actually bought this one on uh, vinyl. And this one, this album is called uh, Still Love. Uh, I don't know why I was going to say this. I, I, I like the album cover. Yeah, the album cover is great. And for those of you that haven't listened to Teenage Risk, they're a band that makes alternative like grunge with some shoegaze elements, very grungy guitars. And they used to be a three-piece band in their first album, but for their second album, they, they're a two-piece now. And uh, this is, you know, this, ah, check out the inside. Wow. Uh, both of them are very talented. And uh, on this album, my they have some collaborations as well. For example, uh, the second song, Dark Sky, features features S.A. Martinez from 311. And when oh, I saw wow. that, I'm like, 311 and Teenage Freeze, I at first I thought, like, this is not going to work, but <laughs> it works so great. Like, mm -hmm. the song is very alternative, grungy, and when S.A. does his rapping thing, it feels like 311 doing a grungier track, so it's great. And then my uh, Still Love feature, featuring Soft Cold, and for those of you that don't know, I'm obsessed with Soft Cold. And this song <laughs> with Teenage Reese and Soft Cold is the perfect blend because you have the, the male vocals and the female vocals. And I, I try to read the lyrics because the song is all about like ha having hope. Can you still love? And it's a beautiful track, very emotional. Uh, again, this album also has something that you would like, layers. I think, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think- Yes, I, because... I listened to that album and I like it. Yeah, a lot of people could dismiss Good. this as, oh, this sounds too grungy, too retro, but no. I think they put like a modern spin on that, and the album starter, Sunshine, is just great. Uh, the guitars are great in it, but other tracks like, uh, for example, Digital Self, Something uh, something Good, it's just like, I wanted to take myself, I want something good. It has that the way they vocalize is just great. Uh, and the album has, it, uh, the second part is great as well. It has acoustic tracks. It has more spacey, like uh, like type of like tracks that sound like a band, like Home or Failure. So Teenage Freeze at my number four. Great, great band, great album. And their third album. Yeah, I like it. And I, and I like that song, especially the one you said that it's a collaboration with South Coast. Oh my soft cult to me is the is the revelation of the year for me. That band, I, I just wish that they put out a full length. But yeah, great stuff and great great third album by Teenage Reese. And this is a band that is it keeps getting bigger. They're they're doing a headline tour now. So the nice. boss with them is really like uh and since the first album I said this band is going to be huge. And I'm correct. Uh, I almost saw this band. Uh, there was a Price concert that I went to, but I got five minutes too late and I missed them. Oh. Uh, so this time, like, damn, I wanted to see Teenage Freeze live. So my number uh, four. So now we're going to Senorita's number three, three album of the year. Yes. And this is very different from all uh, uh my number three, it's uh, for that beautiful feeling, the Chemical Brothers. This and <laughs> here's the album cover. I was actually listening to this today because I'm like, damn, I didn't know that my the Chemical Brothers had a new album. <laughs> yeah, it came out in September, but they've been like releasing singles uh, before that. And the title says, oh, like it gives you that beautiful feeling. Uh, it gives you like, energy uh, uh you want to dance uh uh it's it's a happy album 
uh, pure techno pleasure, dreamy, energetic. Again, it has some layers and some mixes. I, uh, it has some guitar sounding, shoegazy. It has like the synths, uh, a funky bass. It's very catchy and very danceable. Yeah. I was listening I, to I, it and I was vibing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a happy album. Like It's going to give you that beautiful feeling of being happy. Um, yeah. I like the song with uh, Chipping Like a Stone with Beck. And I really love the first single they released, uh, No Reason. It has like a very cool video too. And I, I love Life Again. And the whole album, it's a, it's a vibe. I would love to see them live. Yeah, it should be a good thing. Did, true or false? Yeah. Did you go back to your Marita Raver years? <laughs> I, I have never left my Marita Raver years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I was listening to it and I was just thinking, I would think like Senorita would be like, like, like yep. all dancing. It's a, it's a, you know, it's the Chemical Brothers are, are really there. It's a band that I think that even people that listen to metal have always enjoyed, uh, along with the Prodigy. But I think the Chemical Brothers is more in the pure dance techno side of things. But yeah, I, I was listening to that album uh, like an hour ago, and it really pumped me up. I'm like, I'm glad I I I, I missed this album. So yeah, <laughs> uh, great album. So I agree, uh, and yeah, very different from your other picks. So moving along, yeah, no, number my... three. Yeah, my number three, and my number three is a band that uh, has been around for a few years now. They're from Pittsburgh, and they used to be more like a straight-up hardcore band, but their last two releases, my God, have they... The word for this is experimenting. They are experimenting with their sound, and some people say it sucks. I say I fucking love it. And I'm talking about Code Orange. Uh, and the album is the above. And actually, fun fact, uh, in 2020, Code Orange, their last album was my number one album of the year. For this year, not my number one, but yeah, this is pretty good. But it's and, still on your uh, top. Yeah, it's still in my top. It's my number three. And we got to uh, talk about that song that features Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I first heard uh the album the album and I heard that and I read that Billy Corgan was gonna be on a track I was intrigued and when I listened to the track you know like Billy Corgan comes in around like uh it's like a bridge where uh where he says uh the the famous part where he's like take uh the song's called take shape and he's like spread your wings uh shows who you are and then it builds up and it's just you had me at Billy Corgan. Yeah, it's just great. But the so the album also has songs that are like even more like shoe. It's kind of like more slower, uh, dream dreamier, like songs like Mirror, where Reba Myers uh takes the lead singing. That's what they do also. They have the male singer who's more of the shouting, but uh Reba does great with the grungy parts, like songs like Splinter the Soul, I Fly. But then you have like really like super hardcore uh, songs like Grooming My Replacement and even a song that sounds like garbage with Snapshot. Uh, I don't know if you listen to this one, Senorita. Uh, I listen to some songs. I remember the one with Billy Corgan. I'm not sure. I don't remember yeah. the other ones. Yeah, the one with Billy. Yeah. I think you, you, I don't know if you would enjoy it as a whole because sometimes, but I think Snapshot that sounds like garbage, you would enjoy and I, okay. what I like about Code Orange is that they're a band that take risks. Yes, <laughs> pure Kevin uh, metal. They, they sound like the the band garbage, not the not that they sound like garbage. No, the band garbage. <laughs> not to be confused. <laughs> People will be like, they're garbage. That's why I have them at number three. No, <laughs> no, but. They but sound like the band I, garbage. So the yeah, band I, garbage. I probably will like it. Yeah. Yeah, but something I like about this band is that they're a band that are not afraid to experiment. Uh, this sounds metal, uh, alternative grunge, 
uh, and hardcore all mixed in together. And it's just great. And I and uh, there's some people, uh, other reviewers that have given this album, like a, a, they're like, oh, this sucks. But <laughs> I like different styles of music. And I think that Cover Orange has put out an amazing album uh, that if you like open minded, you will like it. If you're if you want your hardcore just to sound like hardcore, uh, you won't be uh, you won't like this. But it's like Turnstile, uh, Code Orange and Turnstile. They're doing hardcore different. They're mixing stuff, and I think they're doing it great. That way, it's at my number three. So moving along, Senorita, what's your number two album of the year? Uh, my number two, it came out back in March of 2023, and I'm still listening to it, and I'm still loving it. I'm um, talking about Memento Mori by Depeche Mode. This you is know, their... I have that album, but yeah. uh, I don't have it at my top five, but it's in my it's somewhere, and I agree. It's a great album. Um, I've been listening to this since it came out in March uh, and the singles before that is their 15th studio album and it, and it was the first one without Andy Fletcher and this was one of most of, of my most anticipated albums of this year and I'm still loving it like I love it and it it sounds very Depeche Mode, but at the same time, they sound like very modern, very fresh. Like like I said before, this is how you make like a modern record without losing your essence. Yeah, Ghost Again for me is one of, you can put that track along with their classics and it sounds yeah. just as good or I think it's an instant classic. To me, that's, yes. that was one of the songs that I listened to most this year i had it on repeat at the uh like the beginning yeah months. I, I i like that song goes again speak to me my perfect stranger um the whole album yeah that this is a great album and i think the something that i also like about this album the production uh yes and it's an album that we both uh reviewed together on the channel yes so yeah we went deep into this album so uh yes, that's your number two. Great choice. Uh it's it's in my it's in my top it, it, 20. It's in your but, top 20. It's but it didn't make uh my top five, but nonetheless, uh that's one album that we have in common. Uh yes. that we both thought, thought is great. So going uh to my number two, another band that does experimenting. And to me, in my opinion, this is the metal band this year that has made the most commercial success and they're getting bigger. And I'm talking about the band Sleep Token. And I actually reviewed this album uh, for the channel. I did it in ASMR. <laughs> yeah, I did an ASMR video. I tried to be all sexy. I'm like, well, it's Sleep Token. So we should do it as a ASMR video. And this is the cover and it's called Take Me Back to Eden. And why do I love this record? Uh, first of all, the lead singer, Bessel, because we don't know who they are, has a <laughs> great voice. Like I'm telling you, he's got a voice that is beautiful and haunting at the same time. They can have like pretty, like very like the genty sound um sounds uh, they also can have metalcore but they can have songs that are like pure pop mixed with rock and it's just beautiful songs like uh if you think of like uh, songs like this uh the lead single show hold it's just great and lyrically uh they, they're supposed to worship sleep and you, we don't know who they are but uh it's great how they they can blend even jazz in songs like Aqua Regia, which has that piano and jazz stuff. And yes, this is another band that maybe some people are like, oh, this isn't metal enough. I don't fucking <laughs> care. It's, I, I, you know I like them. I, I like that album. And I almost see them, uh, but they were playing at Riot Fest at the same time at the postal service. And I bought the ticket for the postal service. So yeah, of course. Like oh, that happens always in a festival. Like you want to yeah. see 
If they put your favorite bands at the same time, so you have to pick. A. Yeah, but you and, have and to I agree. thought to myself, yeah. well, as Sleep Token, it's a newer band. I probably gonna see them in the future. Let me see the postal service because I don't know when they're gonna make another reunion. Yeah, but you have to agree with me. I think you would agree with me that this is the at least in metal, this is the crossover band of the year. Uh, this is a band that people that do not listen to metal listen to them because they have yeah. that crossover appeal, and uh, they can be they can have like like stronger songs. Like for example, this album, the summoning. The summoning and bore, they're like really like harder songs, but then they have songs like uh, Do You Wish That You Love Me? That is all <laughs> that it sounds like uh more pop. It's like, Do you wish that you love me? And they use auto-tune in a way that it's good, uh on, at least on that song. And I'm telling you, I like it. A lot of people that like, I've heard reviews like, oh, it's too disjointed, every song is different. I'm like what the fuck is wrong with that? Do you want an album that sounds the fucking same from beginning to end? No. To me, that is boring. I think something that I have in common with my albums is that all my albums, uh, my top five, they all have different sounding songs to them. And to me, that's I, I grew up in the 90s. To me, the best albums are the ones that do not sound the same all the way, that they do some experimenting and pushes the envelope. And I think this is what sleep... When you have a band that a lot of people hate, uh, you know they're doing something well. Something. And to me, Take Me Back to Eden is a great album. It was almost my number one, <laughs> but the band at my number one... Uh, just could they, they they had to be number one so that's my number two sleep token take me back to eden so uh so we're down to your number one to your number one what's your number one album of the year this is everything is alive by slow dive um yeah i have it by now it's the only one i have in mind of my top five because I love this band and I knew this record was going to be good. So I pre-ordered before listening to anything of the of the album. And and I wasn't disappointed. Uh, uh, this is uh, their fifth studio album. Uh, but the second, since they came back uh, after a long period of not doing music, uh, it came back, uh, it, it was released on September 1st. I actually uh, so, reviewed that one. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, it, it came out on September 1st at the same time of The Color of Zion. So I had those two records back to back, back to back. Um, and and I have the, the pleasure of seeing them live playing some songs from here. So I'm, I'm more in love with the... <laughs> with with the this record it's like i said again layers on top of layers uh it has like very dreamy uh guitars uh, very shoegazy but like very ethereal um it's uh it's a great album to listen on vinyl but also with your headphones uh, and if you have the chance to see them live, uh, do it. Uh, it's one of the loudest, loudest concerts I've been without being metal. It's true, guys. <laughs> yeah, they, they were like really loud. I think like the loudest concert I've been, it's uh, my bloody Valentine, <coughs> true, guys. And then the slow dive. Yeah. With, and without actually... counting without counting of of course layer <laughs> yeah yeah well that i i did enjoy that album but i actually enjoyed their 2017 self-titled more than that one i don't know i, I thought it had catchier songs but it is a very solid record well, and well, I, I know I you love, love it the, i like the two of uh but i find like this is more happy it is yeah more it happy, more happy. Like, <clears throat> i i i love the the scene. Single kisses, but I also like um 
Andalusia place, uh, Shanti. Yeah, drink some water. <laughs> yeah, and also we didn't do that album review together because I think that's the weekend that you were at the Riot, uh, Riot Fest or something. Um, I was at the, no, that, uh, yeah, on the first, that was the, uh, what is it called? The Korea art concert. music. I, I, I was watching, uh, uh, I was seeing her jam and I also was at the art music festival. That's an electronic music festival. So my rare days are, are still here. <laughs> yes, you're still raving. But yeah, yeah. that's a, that, because a lot of people would think like that would be, a, that would have been an album that we reviewed together, but we didn't do, do it because Senorita was busy. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was yeah. busy firing. Yeah. Uh, uh, someone who also loves that record is the, our, fr our friend, The Green Man. The Green yeah. Man. The Green yeah, Man also friend. loves Shoegaze. And, and he, he had that album in his top 20, but number 15. Uh, but, wow. But, I have yeah. to check his list. Yeah, he has, he has some cool... I, I, I like him because I think, uh, I like, uh, uh, like of the YouTubers like me and you and him, we have like varied taste. Like he loves shoegaze. Yeah. He he even indie pop. So he he has different tastes. So uh, that's why I think like uh, we like some of similar. Like we could do a we in sometime in the future we need to do a shoegaze episode. The three of us because he loves shoegaze as well. So yeah, that's your number one. So now we're going to my number one, and. Uh, Backstory with this band. Uh, this is a band that I've loved for years. I've seen them live. A few years ago, they put out an album that actually made my bad albums of the year <laughs> uh, with their last album because it was terrible. They had tried to do a dance record, their worst record ever. And what do they do? Uh, they come back strong, even though tragedy struck and their drummer uh died i'm talking about the food fighters and the, yeah the album cover is like wow we don't awesome. see anything this the white the album, album. <laughs> yeah, the white album of food fighter but here we are it's a white <laughs> album yeah it's all white and uh, yeah but i bought it because this album is just a beautiful album a rocking album this is the best sounding record for Foo Fighters since 2011's Wasting Light, which I love. And to me, they sound here more energized. It sounds like classic Foo Fighters. They have rocking songs. They have experimentation. There you yeah. go. That word that some people hate. Uh, <laughs> when um, they put I, up the... I, I like it that it reminds me of early Foo Fighters. Early Foo Fighters. Yeah, I and, th and I finally saw them too at Riot Fest and it was like very energetic. Like it was great to see them like, although it wasn't without uh, Taylor. Yeah, they, but they paid homage to Taylor Hawkins in this album. So Dave Grohl for this album, he did the same thing that he did for the first album. He In the first album, he recorded everything. Uh, he recorded the drums in this album and uh, Dave Grohl is an amazing fucking drummer, so I, I wasn't mad about that. Uh, yeah. I think when they the first single, I think was uh, I think it was "Rescued" or "Under You." But "Under You" is a song. You know how they tackle grief in this album because he's uh, this is an album that is all about uh, remembering or loving your friend. Your like, but "Under You" it's all about. The, he's saying about the he's remembering the good times that he had with Taylor. There's a part where it's like I'll remember like smoking cigarettes with you and and just like sharing a laugh. So it's a great track and also uh, the hooks on this album, the choruses are very catchy without being corny. You know they're doing it's a classic record. Uh, then you have songs like but here we are hearing voices. Uh, nothing at all. Uh, Show Me How is more of a shoegaze track where his daughter sings with Dave Grohl and it's a beautiful track. But the track that I was the most surprised with was The Teacher, a 10 minute song for the Foo Fighters. When I saw the length, I was like, I'm like 10 minute Foo Fighters. 
this is the most progressive track on the album and it's great and it's all about uh Dave Grohl's mother who was a teacher and passed away so this album to me is the comeback album of the year for Foo Fighters and <laughs> that's why it is at my number one record I love this record yes it's commercial rock <laughs> and I do not fucking care yeah <laughs> it's a great record and I think it's got that classic sound of like 90s meet 70s where it's like every song feels like it could be a single. So yeah, my number one, Foo Fighters, but here we are. And yeah, the album cover is white, but yeah, whatever. But it's a, I think they do it because it's like minimalist and a tribute to Taylor Hawking. So, Taylor. So we want to know from you people, what are your top five albums of the year? And please, on the comment, on the comments, I want to see your top five. Uh, let me know what you think of our top five. Uh, <laughs> uh, do I you think we... they suck or do you like them? Or... They'll be like, why is there no Cannibal Corpse? And I will <laughs> say like, I respect Cannibal Corpse. I, I, <laughs> but I, but I, they will they never be any... my top Do top they five. have a new album? <laughs> They have a new they had a new album. I reviewed it. Oh, and it sounds like really? Cannibal Corpse. But yeah. <laughs> and also, if you like the 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 t-shirt, you can buy my merch in fretless.com. And I, I gotta get up. I got I, I'm all Christmassy. I oh, wore well. <laughs> my Christmas pants because <laughs> we are here. And uh, I'm sorry if 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 you just tuned in. I'm sorry you saw my crotch there, but maybe 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 you'll subscribe because of it. Hey, if it does it for you, go ahead and subscribe. So uh, please, uh, again, I'm glad to have done this uh, video top five for a second year in a row with Senorita Sabrosura. I hope we can do this forever because I I I wouldn't dream of doing my top five with anyone else. <laughs> Yeah, me neither. I hope Yeah, so. because I know it will be interesting and we'll have different picks. Uh, yeah, we'll so, have different picks. Yeah. So for all of you, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays. Or Happy holidays. holidays or... Whatever you you <laughs> you want to celebrate, even if you don't celebrate, uh, just have fun and a Happy New Year for 2024. And our first video of the year for Señorita Mía and Sabrosura will be our most anticipated albums of 2024. That will be coming in sometime in the beginning of January. So yes. please, uh, if you haven't done so, subscribe to Señorita Sabrosura channel or get her merch. Where can they get yes. your merch? Uh, Instagram. You can write me directly at Instagram. It's at sabrosura.art or Señorita Sabrosura, um, I have my, my jewelry as always, but I also have uh, Christmas ornaments. Yeah, the, the, that that tree has yeah. a lot of ornaments. Uh, <laughs> like this, I painted this. <laughs> no, yeah, it looks pretty nice. And I see the Puerto Rican flag somewhere over there. Oh, I painted that too. I have one in black and one in blue on the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you can see my tree back there, people, uh, it took me like 20 minutes. Uh, I just threw random shit on it. <laughs> but it looks good. Uh, so, and if you like the videos that I'm putting out, you know, don't forget to give me a like and also subscribe to me. I have more content on the way. So, and until share next it. time, people. Yeah, and share it. Share this video, please. So, <laughs> until next time, people, this is Hector. The shield on a couch. Señorita Sabrosura. And we'll see you next year for another collaboration video. Thank you and goodbye.